Yes, um, uh, Roland, I think that it's important that uh, we, we really look at the strategy. And like uh, my colleague, Dr. York mentioned, you know, if you look at the 66 deaths, you know, nine of these deaths are in people who don't have any underlying condition. This is what makes it scary. Uh, the news that is always in comorbid, uh, people with comorbid conditions, the, the story is not exactly the same. So as young people who are even managing, handling, testing these viruses, you cannot predict how it will behave when, when, you, are, when you are infected. So it, it is more difficult. And there's what we call a force of epidemic. As if, if you have 10 people surrounding you who are all infected, you can put on all the marks you want to put on. The force of epidemic will catch up on you. And this is what is happening. As more people are becoming infected, your risk of exposure increases. So how do we deal with this? I mean, there are, there are, there are strategies to deal with this. You know, they have the mitigation strategy and then the suppressing strategy. When we started as a country, we applied the suppressing strategy where you order restrictions, you close borders, you, you close social gathering, you make people sit home so that you can reduce movement, which is one of the major risk factors for infections. And then give some breathing space for the health sector. I mean, let people plan well, let people inject resources, expand your treatment centers, expand isolation centers, buy PPE, buy laboratory logistics, do all you can do. And then after that, you open up or ease restrictions. Whilst you put and um, you monitor the cases as they go by. With the way the cases are surging and with all the contributory factor and with the possible prediction that these cases are likely to double in the coming weeks and the deaths are likely to increase. The mitigation measures are in place, uh, wearing of nose masks, which is mandatory and all that. This is fairly good. But then if everybody wears nose masks, you can cut the virus growth by just about 50%. That one will not be enough to reduce pressure at the health facility. If you want to succeed in crashing the epidemic curve, then you will have to go by what China and others did earlier. You will have to impose or order another form of restriction, which will restrict movement. So that as people move, they just stay home. And once they stay home, it gives you some breathing space to manage the few patients that few people that come to your health facility. So that at least the health workers will also have a breathing space because as more of them are becoming infected and are getting out of the facility, it will come to a point where they will empty the place. But then as people are being infected and moving, two or three times of their numbers are still moving and also infecting. I mean, I know people who are positive who are supposed to undergo self-isolation, but they decide that they have to go to work because they have to work for their employers. But then if a restriction is ordered and everybody knows that we have to stay home, they will be forced to stay home. And when they stay home, you can have some time, some breathing space to re-inject resources in your health sector, to expand your treatment centers again, to buy all the logistics, to plan properly, and then you can deal with the cases again. So. It's not out of place to restrict movement. Doctor Usu, Doctor Usu, what are you yeah. saying? You are saying we should reimpose lockdown. How will you reduce pressure at the healthcare facility? What is the option? One is to expand the isolation units, expand the treatment unit. But you have time to do this. We can do that. But the virus is running ahead of us. So if you have a virus running ahead of you and it's moving at a very faster rate, you need a breathing space and a time to do that. And this is why I earlier said that a form of a localized lockdown is appropriate now. We know where the cases are coming from. If we know that... Oh, oh. Dr. Uzu, are you on stream? Uh, Dr. Yorok, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I can hear you. Uh, do you support this uh, localized lockdown, he says? Well, I think um, I don't have a yes or no answer, but certainly be one of the considerations uh, to have. I don't think that um, on the national level, um, you know, the government will be prepared to do that, considering the socio-political um, implications of that, and also economic implications. So, yes, look at that localized lockdown may be one of the options, you know, to consider. However, I think. Even as we consider those other options, what about the, uh, the, the prescriptions that we, we accepted that we should be doing? 
you know, we say wearing of no masks, social distancing, just drive around, you know, the cities and towns. Nobody's observing it. Just a few people, you know, go to the market. It's a few days as if there's no COVID, go to residential areas. And so the vim and the enthusiasm which we appreciate, we, we seem to be relaxing as the virus, you know, the, the, the proportion increase. And this is a time rather to intensify. I remember seeing policemen, security people along the streets enforcing. Have you seen them again? They are all gone. So yesterday, the Greater Accra issued a statement. And what we were calling for is intensification of an enforcement of these preventive measures. Whilst we didn't think about other uh, uh, interventions, as you suggested, as 